Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where you will learn how to model steel and concrete buildings in RAM structural system. Over the next series of videos, we're going to be creating our three-dimensional building structure that consists of concrete and steel structural elements. For this particular video, we're going to be focusing on the first floor layout, which contains concrete beams, concrete columns, and concrete walls. We will now turn our attention back to our RAM structural system model. Now the first thing we're going to do is tell the program which material we're going to be using and which layout we're going to be working on. To do that, we're going to go to our material pull down menu and we're going to tell the program that we're going to start by working on our concrete system. We're also going to tell the program which layout we're working on and I'm going to select my concrete floor. Now that I've established those pieces of information, let me also direct your attention to our layout toolbar. Now the layout toolbar contains icons for each type of system that can be created in RAM structural system. When you select a particular icon from the layout toolbar, you're gonna notice that all the tools that are available for the layout toolbar item that you selected are then going to become available. These tools can be used to create model geometry and also assign properties to the systems you already have modeled. We're going to start by modeling our concrete columns. So we're going to select the layout column icon and then we're going to notice um, several icons that are going to be available to help us with our modeling. The two main tools that we have available are the on grid tool and the off grid tool. The on grid tool will basically allow you to create a column at a grid intersection that you already have created. In addition to that, you can also use the off-grid tool. So if you want to place a column somewhere out in the field of the floor system that is not in corresponding to a grid intersection, you can also do that. Just note that if you model your columns at grid intersections, those locations will be provided on all of your reports after your analysis and design concludes. So I do recommend trying to use grid systems when modeling your concrete columns to make interpreting your results later on a little bit easier. So let's go ahead and select the on grid icon. And then we're going to be asked to enter um, particular pieces of information. Now the program knows I'm modeling a concrete column because I selected my concrete material here. So I'm going to start by telling the program that this is a standard column. Now standard columns extend from the current layout to the level below. This is the first level of my structure, so it'll be going from this level, which is at Z equals 12 feet, down to the base of the structure, which is at Z equals zero. I'm also going to enter the properties. So I have my compressive strength of concrete. I'm gonna be using four KSI concrete. And I'm gonna enter my unit weight and my unit weight for self weight. Now the unit weight for self weight is going to be used to help the program calculate what the dead load of the structural systems weighs. The unit weight field is basically used to calculate the modulus of elasticity for the concrete system. Now you are allowed to enter these values independently of each other, so we provide fields available for each one. In addition to that, you can also enter Poisson's ratio. Uh, we're gonna enter normal weight concrete, and we're gonna ask the program to use the calculated value. Again, it's going to calculate the elastic modulus using the unit weight field. We're going to enter our reinforcement yield strength and also the framing. Now in RAM structural system, structural elements are broken up into two different categories, um, gravity and lateral. Gravity members are capable of resisting any type of gravity forces, including dead load, live load, and snow load. Any member designated as lateral will be part of the vertical lateral force resisting system and can also resist forces such as wind or seismic. For this training course, we're gonna be focusing on just creating a gravity system. We do have additional training courses that go into lateral members a little further in detail. Lastly, we're gonna enter the orientation of our concrete columns and I'm going to tell the program I want to go parallel to the X or radial grids. Once we're done, we have two different adding options. We can add single, which basically means you're going to click manually at every single grid intersection you want to create this particular column at. Or we can select the fence option. 
Now, if you use fence, basically any grid intersection that you draw a fence around will get this column added. Let's go ahead and use the fence option. And then we're going to fence around some of our interior grid lines, basically along grid line D, E, and F. So here's my fence. If I release my mouse, it's going to create a concrete column at each of those grid locations. Now, if I want to add some additional ones, I can just right click. Now, a right click in the RAM modeler will basically bring you back to the previous dialog you were just at. All the fields will be the same as you just previously specified. So this time, I'm going to select the single option. And then I'm going to create columns along my radial grid. Now that we've created our concrete columns, let's go ahead and move on to another element type. And let's start by modeling our concrete walls. Now, typically in RAM structural system, you would want to create your vertical elements before any of your beam systems. So that's why I'm starting with columns and walls first. And then that will give my beams something to rest on once I'm ready to model them. So again, I'm working with concrete. And instead of columns, I'm going to go to my layout toolbar and select the wall option. Now you're going to see here I have the same exact tools that I had before, on grid and off grid. I'm going to choose to add my columns on grid, and then I'm going to enter all of the parameters. And all these parameters are basically the same as they were, or similar, to our concrete columns. So I am going to be creating gravity walls. All of my properties uh, are the same as they were for my columns. Some additional fields have appeared here, though. You're going to enter your thickness of your wall. I'm going to enter a 12 inch thick wall. And we can also calculate or enter the cracked factor for membrane and cracked factor for bending for our concrete walls. Now in addition to that I also have the single and the fence option. I'm going to use the single option for this exercise. So let's go ahead and click single and then I can start modeling our walls. Now since walls represent a length each one is going to require two clicks. The starting end of the wall and the ending end of the wall. For some additional advice, you can always look down at the status bar at the bottom of the screen, which will give you important instructions for what the program is expecting you to do next. So let's go ahead and model a wall along grid line one between grid lines C and G. So I'm going to click at C1. Then you can see I'm kind of rubber banding back and forth. And then I'm going to go over to G1 to create my wall. Let's go ahead and create a wall along grid line five as well and we'll go along grid line one. Now in addition to that, I'd like to create some walls in this area. Now along grid line C, I'm going to have two T wall intersections. That's going to be at C4 and C2. Now whenever you have any type of wall intersection in the RAM model, you do want to create a joint in your wall at that location, basically to allow proper force transfer between the two walls that are connecting to each other. So instead of going from C1 all the way up to C5, I'm going to break my wall where my intersections will be located. So I'm going to go from C1 to C2, from C2 to C4, and then from C4 to C5. Now I'm ready for my T wall intersection. So I'm going to go from C4 out to B4, and then on down to complete that workflow. Now that we've created all of our vertical elements, we're ready to move on to creating our concrete beams. Again, I'm going to start this process by selecting my appropriate layout icon. And once I've selected my layout beam icon, I'm going to see my same two tools, add on grid and add off grid. I'm going to use the on grid tool. I'm going to enter in all of my parameters. And then I'm going to go ahead and use the fence option. Now whenever I use the fence option, what it'll do is it'll look for concrete columns at grid intersections and it will create a beam in each direction to connect those columns. So if I draw a fence around my entire model, it's going to recognize that I want to create concrete beams along this radial area for those columns and the center of my screen. Now, it doesn't automatically, with the fence command, connect it to any walls. So we can use the single option to add those. So I'm going to right click, which again will bring me back to my previous dialog. I'm going to click the single option. And then I'm going to 
continue on. And just like with my concrete walls, it's going to take two clicks. Now it's not necessary to break the concrete walls when a concrete beam is framing into them, only when concrete walls are joining together. Now once we're done, we'll go ahead and click the Save option. Now this concludes our process for creating our concrete columns, our concrete walls, and our concrete beams. Now if we would like to preview the three-dimensional view of our first floor plan, I can come up to my View toolbar and select the 3D View icon. And we can see what our structure is looking like so far. So we can see we've created that first floor plan. Now my layout for my concrete floor is at this elevation, so any concrete columns or concrete walls that are modeled at that layout are going to go from that floor to down below. To return to your layout view, you're just going to say File Exit, which will bring you right back to the RAM modeler. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.